This is an example using a conditional premise. We call the example party. The story is this. If we come home early, and then if we go to sleep early, we will get up early. Either we will come home early, or we will go to the party. In either case, we will go to sleep early. If we do not go to the party, we will get up early. We begin by assigning these names to basic statements. H represents we come home early. S represents we go to sleep early. U represents we will get up early. And P represents we will go to the party. From the story, we extract these premises. H implies S implies U. That is, if we come home early, and then if we go to sleep early, we will get up early. H or P, that is, either we will come home early or we'll go to the party. And finally, S, that is, we will go to sleep early. The conclusion to be drawn is not P implies U, that is, if we do not go to the party, we will get up early. The premises of this problem are H implies, S implies U, H or P, and S. The conclusion we seek is not P implies U. So, what strategies could we use to obtain this conclusion? First look at the conclusion, which is not P implies U. Suppose we assumed the conditional premise, not P, and from that we were able to show U. Then we would have the conclusion that not P implies U. That's the idea in conditionalization. We temporarily add premises to get implications. So, suppose we did have the premise not P. We see from the second premise that we would be able to conclude H using disjunctive syllogism. Then from the first premise, H would give us that S implies U. And finally, from the last premise, S and modus ponens, we would have U. Since not P was added as a conditional premise, we don't have the conclusion U from the original premises. What we have from the original premises is that not P implies U. So, it seems as if a good place to begin this proof is with a conditional premise of not P. If you would like to produce the proof on your own, you should pause this video now. The proof begins with listing the three original premises, H implies, S implies U, H or P, and S. Now we introduce the conditional premise, not P, on line 4. From the statement on line 2, together with this new line 4, and using the disjunctive syllogism rule, we obtain H on line 5. Having obtained H and using line 1, we obtain S implies U using modus ponens. Finally, from lines 3 and 6, once again using modus ponens, we have the conclusion U. We have obtained the statement U on line 7, having added the extra premise not P on line 4. Now it is time to remove that as a temporary premise, and to do that we obtain not P implies U, which is on line 8. This is called discharging the conditionalization. 